Good morning again, my little potato chips. It's wee Paddy from Across the Shock and back at you with another video. And I hope you're noticing that they're going to start increasing, like I said. So, I've got a bit of a... This is a bit of a new passion in my knife collecting. You know that in the past, I've done videos on these two. This is a Taylor's Eyewitness and this is a James, an ERA James, which are old turn of the 19th century or turn of the 20th century, 1900 knives. Um back at the start of the 1900s and I got them and I've sort of now wanted to increase my antique knives. So antique being counted over here in the UK, I'm sure it's the same in America, is over a hundred years old. This is what we're going to talk about that you'll see in the description. This is from the 1880s, which just is a lovely thing to have. I'll get on to that shortly. But the reason I like these knives is that even after all these years, their fit and finish is amazing. The spring tension, everything about them is still very functional. In fact, this one I carry quite often. You do know I like a little Warncliffe blade. But they're both great knives, still in great condition and usable today. I wonder how many of our knives that are made... Um, nowadays will still be around in 100 years time will people still want to collect them we'll never know will we because we'll not be about <laughs> so anyway this knife that we're going to talk about let me just show you a close-up of this knife it is quite crude to modern day standards but to the 1880s this must have been a really high end look at the way that spring comes right the way round and terminates at the front there. Sorry, I must get this picture a bit clearer for you. Look at the way it terminates there. A little small blade, a teardrop shape. Now, this was either, I believe it's bone, but to be honest with you, if I show you a look along the side, this could well have been a nice little piece of stag that has just become completely smooth over the years of use and handling quite easily it is a stunning bit of bone or stag whatever it was but i absolutely love it now there's no maker's name attributed to this but from the information that i gathered from the fellow i bought it off and i bought it on etsy uh these are private buyers that are on a, a, a I, I don't even know of Etsy. You know I'm not very um, bright as far as technology goes, but I don't know whether Etsy's in America as well, but I know there's American dealers on the Etsy over here, which will send knife, knives back, even British knives back to the UK and vice versa with the channels, with the, uh, the British buyers here. So a stunning knife. And, and the reason it's stunning is it, Look, maybe I'm just an old fool, but you see holding something in your hand that comes from the 1800s that has obviously been used but loved to make it stay like this. I'll go through this. Look, let's go back a bit in my channel. One of the things I really got into was GECs. And this was one of my first ones with this lovely bone. And I sat saying, I stroked this. It's nearly obscene how much pleasure I get from, it's like a worry stone. I absolutely love the bone on this knife. It is just stunning. That is just increased tenfold when you get something that is from the 1800s and what life this knife has led. I mean, let's have a, a closer look. I'll bring it up closer and we'll get a detailed look. Look at the bolster and the pins. There are, it's three, it's four pin on the blade, sorry, and one pin in the bolster. And these are handmade pins. Everything in this is handmade. There's no, there's no CNC machine, but I want to show you the little blade. Look at that delicate little blade. But look, it has a long pull here. Can you see the long pull? It has a swedge along the top. Now, there's no maker's name on it, but that wasn't uncommon in the 1800s. It's got a bit of a bad chip in the blade. I hope I can get it to you to see it. Oh, not getting it. But I'm going to sharpen it and get it into a useful condition. You can see that over the years it has been sharpened. But I don't believe the blade was much bigger than what that is. Because this is a knife used for sharpening your quill. They call it a quill knife. 
and obviously that's the reason that I have a feather here. That's the reason for the feather, because they sharpen the end of the feather to make a pen. Now, I'm saying this for maybe younger viewers. They sharpened this and made it into a nib like you would have in a normal fountain pen now. And this is what they used to write with. They dipped it in the ink and they wrote away. So I'm going to have a go at replicating that. This is just, this is probably a seagull feather. I got it up on the golf course the other day. So I'm going to sharpen this knife and try and make a nib, a functioning nib. And I'll get some ink. I haven't got that yet. But I'll do a little video actually doing it rather than doing it and then showing you. I'll do a video and we'll do it live together and see if it works. So that's exciting. That's another part of my knife hobby. And this is going to be, I've actually got another solid silver fruit knife coming, which I'll show on the channel. But this is just, I cannot stop rubbing it. I've had it in my pocket. It actually still cuts, but it, there is a chip and a blade, which I'll get out and I'll get a nice edge on it. It's carbon steel. Um, the back spring itself, I think, is also carbon steel. Um, but just so well made it is perfectly made in a tiny little package and i would say this would have been something that one of the gentry would have had this is not a working man's knife it might have the look of it in modern day uh, looks if you like but I, the average man on the street was not going to get this build quality listen to the half stop in this knife that is from the 1880s listen to that isn't that, it's just, it's probably still as good as the day an it was bought. It's just beautiful. And I can't wait to get it into a proper functioning knife and using it on that feather. That's going to be its first task. So I'm really looking forward to doing that video. But I hope you'll agree that the bone on this, if I, I keep trying to get you... It is, you can see the shape of the, I think it was, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was stag of some sort, but I'm going to go with bone. But it is so hand rubbed smooth. I can't explain to you. Even the lumps and bumps are just smoothed over in the gaps. Just a stunning piece of artistry from, from a time when they didn't have the tools that they have now to make good knives. This was just this blew me away. So I'm over the moon with that. The other thing, here's a, a, a size comparison. There's a peanut. Look at the difference in size. The peanut looks positively rugged compared to it in its build quality. And uh, it's just another, th another part of the collection that goes to prove you just don't have to have the modern titanium flipping high grade steel you can still have a knife like this which for a bit of carbon steel would have been perfect for cutting a quill and easily strap back on a leather belt that's what it would have been used for that's what it you how it has been sharpened so again a wonderful piece of history something that i just i'm i'm looking forward to actually finding out more detail about knives like this i need to start looking about for old-fashioned books that describe it but it's just uh, another whole avenue of this hobby that gets me excited that gets me wanting to touch stroke and you can nearly think back to what it would have been like living in the 1800s writing a letter to your loved one with a feather just that romance of that and i know it wasn't a particularly romantic time but that romance that a little knife can bring back and can set off emotions that are in you is just marvelous so I'm probably gushing now. But it is a beautiful knife. I'm so glad I've got it in collection. I'll do that video once I get some ink and sharpen her up. And I hope you enjoy it. The one thing I'd like to do is thank the people from my last video. I had Sambar Stag and another Indian Stag. If you go into the description of my last video and see some of the responses I got, I want to thank each and every one. I've read every single one. I have a few yet that I've got to reply to. But thank you so much to everybody who contributed to that wee video. Really enjoyed it. So there you go. Paddy's away to swoon over his new worry stone that's replacing the GEC. Uh, American Jack. Take care, everybody. It is time for that wee cup of tea. And I'll see you all very shortly with another video. Take care. Bye-bye now.